with the heavy rains and winds brought by Typhoon Dolphin and Typhoon Chanum came destruction. Many local farmers were hit hard, having to rebuild and replant majority of their crops. Farm to Table Guam Business Fiscal Officer Thalia Ganji says they were not exempted, having suffered damage as well. The weather's been rough on, on us, like all farms. Um, we've had to struggle with the heavy, heavy rains and the winds. Uh, some of our herbs uh, don't do well in the rain and lettuce, they get a little bit waterlogged, so we've struggled. We've lost some of our crops and we've had to replant. According to Ganji, they have been doing research on new and innovative growing methods, including which ones are conducive to Guam's climate and are slowly recuperating. We try to have backup crops and also we are trying some new techniques. In the background you see our um, shade cloth that's covering some of our planting beds. That's a dual purpose because we've also had some intense heat counter, uh, alternating with the intense rain. And so we put the shade cloth up to shield some of the crops from having too much sun and also to prevent too much rain from dripping on them, even when it you know, prevents a little bit too much water from falling on them. We're trying that and it seems to be a little bit successful. Kanji says that this technique has allowed their crop of herbs and lettuce to get the right amount of water and sunlight. Although primarily a salad farm, the nonprofit organization has found success in growing an array of herbs. We're uh, producing things that grow short term and have a high um, uh, water content, so things like lettuce, cucumbers, uh, herbs such as the, the basils, the Thai basil, the Genovese basil, lemongrass, cilantro. We're one of the only farms that produce cilantro on the island right now. And a big plus with their crops is a rapid turnover time, which means that Farm to Table is able to meet the demand of customers by harvesting and producing quickly. And speaking of meeting the demands of customers, Farm to Table's weekly community-supported agriculture boxes have been popular. So much so, they are having difficulty keeping up with the demand, which she admits is a good problem to have. We hope that more farms will follow after this example and, and open up CSAs of their own and we're happy to share the information on how it's done. But at this time, we have 50 open subscriptions and um, a lot of people waiting in line. So we're, we're really happy about that and, and we continue to hope to meet the demand. With this week's Local Harvest, I'm Jonathan Charfris.